Hello, uh, welcome to this uh, online workshop for um, real physics with fruit and sweets. I think it's working now. It says it's gone live. Um, I don't really have an easy way of, of checking, but I'm sure somebody will, will let me know um, if it isn't working or not. What I'm just going to do, the format of this um, event will be, I'm going to go through about five different ways of using fruit and sweet simple experiments that I'll show you on video. And then what we'll do is um, we'll have some discussion about it in the forums that you can see below you on the Talk Physics webpage. So um, I'm going to try and, and show you uh, in how these work and the ones work. And if you can't see very well with, with the webcam, I've had a bit of trouble setting up the laptop webcam. Um, I've got a one on a, I've got one of these ones that um, will allow me to show you the equipment a bit more. But I've had a bit of trouble getting that to work with Google. So if it doesn't work very well, I've actually recorded um, some uh, little clips of each one in a bit a bit closer up, so that if you can't see it as I go through it, first of all, hopefully it will it will come on for you. Uh, I'll upload them, sorry, to the to the forums in 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 a bit. If you're just joining in, I can see some viewers just joining me. It's popping up on the bottom of my screen. Welcome. This is the Real Physics with Fruit and Sweets um, workshop. Now, the first one I'm going to do is uh, diamagnetism using grapes. I don't know if you've seen this before. It's a really nice little demonstration. If I just move this down, you'll see what I've got here is a simple setup with an upturned beaker. Um, on top of that, I'm going to put a watch glass. On top of that, I've got a straw. And on the straw, there's just a drawing pin in the middle. And then I've got two nice large grapes, one on either side. And I'm just going to balance that on the straw there. I might need to just push that one on a little bit more. So now I've overbalanced it the other way. There we go, nice and balanced. And here's what you do. You get some nice, strong neodymium magnets. I've got two of them joined together here. These are very commonly available. And I'm just going to hold that next to one of these grapes here. And hopefully what will happen, it says, I don't think it's, uh, it's balanced quite correctly just at the moment. Let me just um, sort that out. The, the watch glass and the drawing pin arrangement is just to minimize friction. That's all it is, um, just so the movement can be seen more easily. Uh, the windows of live TV, can't get it to balance. It was balanced until I moved it a minute ago, that's the thing. Here we go. Right, there we go. So it's balanced there. And uh, what I'm going to do now is bring my magnets um, up here, and hopefully you will see. Aha, it is working. Look, there we go. The grape is moving around. Now, as it comes around towards the camera, you should be able to see it there. You will see that I'm not pushing it. There is no trickery involved. It is simply coming around due to the effects of the magnet. Can you see that? Then if I put my magnet the other way here, you'll see it slow down. I'm not going to touch the grape. I'm just going to push it back the other way. And the challenge of this is, hmm, grapes, they aren't magnetic. They don't normally attract to magnets. But these grapes seem to be being repelled by magnets. So what's going on there? I can just prove to you, by the way, if I just dismantle it, that, um, that the grape isn't in any way attracted. Oops, sorry, put it on the camera. The grape isn't in any way attracted to the magnet at all, doesn't stick to it, no nothing. And of course, the explanation is that, uh, that grapes are filled with water. And this experiment would work with any fruit that was largely made of water. So strawberries or something like that would be fine. And um, water is diamagnetic, so not ferromagnetic, like, like normal magnetic materials, but diamagnetic. And that means that when you put an external magnetic field, um, when you put it in an external magnetic field, like we're doing when we put the, the strong neodymium magnets there, um, it induces a magnetic effects in the, in the water that uh, opposes the, um, the field that you, are, that you are putting toward it causing the effect that we see. So just to show you once again. Sorry, I feel a bit nervous. I don't know why. I've never done anything like this before. So if my explanations are a bit stuttering, you'll have to forgive me. But my, um, I've never been on live TV before, and my heart's beating a bit. So there we go. Um, so if I try it again, I'll just put it down like this. And hopefully you will see it repelling from the magnet. So there we are. So there's magnetism with grapes and a strong magnet. 
So that's the first one. Now, um, as we go through, you'll see below the video, if you're watching on Tool Physics, there are some forums, and there's a forum for each of the experiments. Now, as I said earlier on, if you've just joined in, um, I have made some short clips of each of these experiments, and I will upload each of those four, those five, sorry, short clips to the relevant forum after um, I've, we've finished doing this live bit. But if you've got any comments, you want to ask anything, or you are just interested and you want to explore it a bit further about how you might use it with, with students in lessons, then feel free to make some comments in the relevant forum underneath, and we'll be online for the next hour or so to hopefully answer any questions that you might have. So give it that element of interactivity. Um, there are plenty of other Institute of Physics people around. Um, I've seen who, who are joining in as well, so there'll be lots of people available to answer your questions. If you don't know me, I'll just introduce myself. I think I forgot to do that at the start. My name's Dan Cottle, and I'm a teacher um, at King Edward VI Fiveway School in Birmingham, and obviously I'm also a Physics Network Coordinator for the Institute of Physics, and uh, this is part of a workshop I did live um, in Birmingham uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is why I'm just doing a few snippets of it now. I'll also upload uh, in a bit uh, document with a few more details of, of each of these experiments and some ideas for lots lots more. So that was the first one. Um, I'll show you another another easy one um, before we, well they're all quite easy actually, all of these ones, because you can see I'm at home, I haven't got lots and lots of equipment, so they're all they're all pretty simple. Excuse me for a second while I get the second one. This is a, just a really simple and nice static electricity one. I did this one um, in class just the other day when we were doing static with uh, year nine, we do it at my school. So I've just got an empty Coke can, Diet Coke can, nothing in particular in it, and I've got a balloon here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna charge up the balloon on my wall jumper, and I'm gonna hold the balloon near to the camera. What do you think is gonna happen when I do that? Well, watch and you'll see. So I bring the charge balloon near the can, and it's attracted to the can. Now just to prove to you, there's no nothing untoward, there's no magnets under the table. Look, there are my magnets, I'll put that away. Don't know whether that's magnetic at all anyway. No, it isn't magnetic at all, so there's no magnetic effects. Charge it up again, and hold it near to the can, and it goes the other way. And that is a really nice little demonstration slash experiment to go with your charging rods or bending a be a stream of water or whatever else you might want to do. Oops, sorry, I'm charging it anyway. Something different, there we go. Oh, does it start working? Just discharge myself and uh, try again. There we go. Ooh, I think there's something on, there's, actually there's some stickiness on the table actually. This is our dining table, there we go. So move it away from the stickiness and it, it works a bit better. He says, hopefully. There we go. <laughs> There we go, it's slightly undramatic now, but you saw it the first time, it does work. And of course, the reason why, why that one is working is because we are charging up the balloon. Now, I, I can't remember my triboelectric series off the top of my head. I'm not sure what the material in this balloon, what it's being charged as, either positive or negative. Let's, for the sake of the argument, assume it's negative. Obviously, if this is a, a negative charge, then holding it near to the can, there will be some delocalized electrons able to move around in the metal that the can is made of. When I put the negative charge near to that, it will uh, repel, those electrons can move. So the negative electrons will be, the ones that can will be moved to the opposite side of the can there, leaving this side of the can positive. And so this can will then attract toward the balloon, seeing the effects that we just observed. So that's a nice little thing, very easy to do. Have a few Coke cans in your electrostatics kit, um, no problem whatsoever. So once again, if you've got any questions or you want to ask anything about that, then you um, feel free to ask in the forums underneath. And I'm sure you've all got lots of suggestions for other neat little demos for static electricity, because I think it's one of those things we all have our, our favorite little, little um, tricks that we like to use on that. Right, the next one I'd like to show you um, is just a, a, a little variation on a fruit cell that you can use on a number of different levels, actually. It depends on, on what you want to do. So what I'm going to do here is um, to show you how I've set up my fruit cell. Uh, I've got it in a, a little tub. Can you see that all right? I'm not sure. It's a bit difficult because I'm having to bend the laptop screen around. Let me just move my wires a little bit. So hopefully the setup's a bit clearer. Once again, I have got a slightly better closer in clip of this taken with a with a better webcam um, that I will upload afterwards. Now, I've got two lemons and I've connected those in series. So I've done that with uh, this blue wire in the middle is connecting them, connecting them, the two together like that. 
Now, um, I'm using two electrodes in each. I'm using a copper electrode. I don't know if you can see the orange of the copper there. And I'm using a zinc electrode there. And then another copper and another zinc. So the ones in the middle, I'm connecting copper to zinc here with my, with my blue wire to put the two lemons in series. Now, um, I've got my two trailing, trailing leads here. So the first thing I can do is I can get my uh, multimeter. Um, it's going to be difficult to angle that. Let me just get it plugged in and then I'll lift it up and, and so you can see with the reading on the multimeter. So if I just uh, switch the multimeter on, you can see there it is reading a voltage. So my two lemons in series is giving me 1.83 volts there. Now, um, what I like to do with the fruit cell is to use it to power to, to, to light, sorry, an LED. And I like to use it to flash an LED uh, by charging a capacitor and then discharging the capacitor through an LED here. So I've got a couple of components. Now, the ones I like to use are, this is a, a 220 microfarad capacitor. It's an electrolytic capacitor that I've mounted in a um, just one of the wooden mounts that we have at school with sockets on. I've, I've marked on negative and positive here because that's going to be quite important in a minute or two when we connect it up to the LED. So it's an electrolytic, that's negative there. Um, I'm now gonna, gonna put that, if I move this sideways now, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to connect that, this up. Now I always, can't, I can't, can never remember what the right way of connecting this. Oh, I think it's that way. I think I connect the zinc to negative and I'm gonna connect the copper electrodes to positive. And hopefully that will now be charging my capacitor. I've then got an LED. Now this type of LED I'm using here is some that I buy from Maplin, um, and they're, they're low voltage LEDs. You can see it's 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 quite a large LED there. I find them quite useful because it has a very low on voltage, um, so it's it's good for applications like this. So hopefully I've charged my LED now. I'm going to sorry, charge my LED, charge my uh, capacitor now. I'm going to plug some wires into my LED. I have marks negative. And positive here so I know to connect negative on my capacitor to negative on my LED and positive to positive because obviously it matters which way around you connect the LED so just something to, to watch out for there so with my capacitor being charged I'm going to unplug it from the lemon battery cell and now I'm going to just turn the lights off oops sorry can't there we go so you're looking out for the flash here so if I connect the one wire and then hopefully when I connect the other wire, there we go. Did you see it? It was over quick, wasn't it? But there we go. So I'll just quickly charge it up again. It doesn't take a second or two to charge up. If you missed it the first time, you will see it the second time. So there we go. Let's charge the capacitor. And then discharge through the LED. So if you are watching, one, two, three, and... There we go. Did you see the flash? Yeah. And if you look very, very closely, oh no, it's gone off now. It was just glowing dimly as the capacitor gradually discharged, you know, through the um, through the LED. Now um, I'm going to leave the lights off actually for a minute because because these are very low voltage LEDs with two lemons in series. This uh, this LED will actually light um, will actually light directly from from the cell. But very dimly. Um, I've forgotten the on voltage actually of this particular LED, but if I hold that close, can you see that's on very, very dimly? And um, these are the only LEDs that I found that will actually light uh, reliably anyway from lemon batteries. So um, I've got the details of the model number and so on, and I will post those on the forum in a few minutes. Uh, and they're available from Maplin if you're interested in, in buying those or looking or looking for those. Okay, once again, any questions or any comments or any other uses, I'm sure, again, uh, in the community of talk physics, lots of people have got ideas for how to use lemon batteries and cells, fruit cells. I must admit, I like to do um, internal resistance of fruit at A-level, and um, I've just thought about doing it when I was doing this workshop the last time, actually, but I thought, why don't I use data loggers, actually, and, and look at the charge and discharge curves of the capacitors from fruit cells? I really ought to do that, I think, next time I do, uh, I do capacitors. Okay. So that's uh, a little thing you can do with fruit cells. Moving on, what should we do next? I think now's the time for the um, potato and straw trick. So if you excuse me just for a, a moment while I 
when we get a potato and a straw. This one's to do with forces. So I've chosen a few different simple things that are on different topics for this and ones that I could easily do actually um, in the comfort of my own home and not being at work with lots of needing lots of stuff. But I've got a potato. I know it's not fruit. OK, you can do it with apples. I've got an apple. I'll, I'll do it with an apple in a minute. And I've got um, a straw. Uh, just a normal straw these are quite nice nice straws now the challenge for this one is to put the straw through the potato and you can see as you do this if you push it it won't go it doesn't really matter how hard you try you can't get the potato to go you can't get the straw to go through the potato so the question is how do you do it where you apply a bit of newton's laws to the situation and force equals mass times acceleration so what do we need to do we need to make the straw accelerate through the potato now if you don't believe if this doesn't work first time i have got a clip of me doing it that i will upload it, it does work honestly but live on video with me feeling nervous we'll give it a go and see what happens all right so you've got to be confident that's the essence of this now i'll just try and get myself in the frame so i'm just going to hold it together like this and i've just got to go wow straight through are you ready so three two one and Aha, it works, look, simple as that. Just got to have confidence in physics. Physics works, obviously. And, uh, and there we go. So the straw goes straight through the potato. Now, I did say it was fruit physics, not vegetable physics, by the way. Look, there's the, the hole. Can you see through there? I'm not sure if you can see me through there. There we go. Anyway, there we go. There really is a hole. It does work with apples as well. Here is an apple. The problem I have with apples, if I'm being completely honest, is that the core of the apple does make it, for me, I find a little bit more difficult. But um, we'll, I'll give it a go. So it's, uh, that, that light in the background actually works. So ready? Try it with an apple. Ready? Three and two and one and. Yeah, it works. So there we go. It's gone straight through first time. Quite surprised, actually. I was doing that a few times about 10 minutes ago before this started, and I couldn't get it to go through the apple. So I'm quite pleased it did on camera. So that's brilliant. So there it goes. So we've got a straw through an apple there. There we go. That's that one. So I think, um, is that four we've done now? I think that might be four we've done. Um, if you just joined us, I can see viewers joining and um, joining us as we speak. My name is Dan Cottle, and this is the um, Real Physics with Fruits and Sweets. I don't know what you call this hangout webinar. I'm not sure what the name for it is, um, but we've we've just done a few simple things on different topics. I'm going to show you one other little thing now using sweets, and this is on the topic of um, quantum physics and atomic physics, mainly aiming really, I suppose, at um, at your A level. AS level classes with this one. Um, this is the hardest one to show you actually without the other the other webcam because it relies on um, on a piece of paper. Um, so let me just move it round like this. This is going to be a bit tricky. Now um, I have got a better clip of this, like I said to you before, using a, a different a different webcam. Um, I hope you can get the gist of it now though and then we can see so what i've got is i've uh, got a number of smarties here there are six different color smarties just out of the smarties packet uh, there are other colors of smarties in the packet there are pink ones and brown ones but i've removed those they had to be sacrificed and eaten in the name of science to leave me with six the reason i need six different colors here is because i've drawn an energy level diagram for the energy levels in a in, a, in an atom on my on my diagram there i'm not sure actually if it should be the other way around on camera i can't quite tell is that is that better i'm not 100 percent sure that that might be is that better for me or is it better for you i'm not exactly sure so let's i think i go about this way i think that's yes that's right i think that's right so at the bottom here i've got the ground state in an atom and then i've got one two three more energy levels and the red lines here are representing energy level transition so the idea would be that um, we've got uh excitation of an electron from one energy level to another and then de-excitation as the as the atom goes down and so uh, sorry the atom as the electron moves down and as it obviously it moves down it gives off a photon with a wavelength that is related to the energy difference between the two levels. And so I've got six possible transitions here from n equals four, which is the top one, n equals four down to n equals one, n equals four to n equals two, n equals four to n equals three, and then starting at the n equals three energy level down to the ground state, and from n equals three to n equals two, and n equals two to the ground state. So the challenge for the pupils is they get given the different color smarties, and all they've got to do is they've got to um, 
get the wavelength right. And so they've got to know what order, you know, the colors of the rainbow, which of these colors has the longest wavelength and which has the shortest wavelength and which of these energy level transitions that uh, those wavelengths compare to. Okay, um, so the first thing to do in this is to put the uh, Smarties in order. So Richard of York gave Battle in Vain or whatever one you want to use. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. They're now in order of wavelength. And you think to yourself, okay, well, which one has the uh, the shortest wavelength and which one has the longest wavelength? Well, the, the violet has the shortest wavelength and the, the red has the longest wavelength. And then these represent photons that are given off by de-excitation for the different ones. So where do they go? Well, obviously, um, applying E equals HF, the formula, um, we know that uh, the frequency is proportional to the, to the change in energy. So uh, a high frequency is one with a, a large energy change. So the highest frequency ones here would be violet, the ones with the largest energy change. So that's my... N equals four to N equals one. So that's the photon of light given off by that energy transition. The next one will be the next longest, which in this case is that one there. And the next longest is that one. And then where are we with these ones here? Well, the yellow one will be that one, be the next longest. That one will be the next. And that one will be the next. So I've done that very quickly. Obviously, you can structure a bigger activity around that, but it gives the, the uh, pupils something physical to move around and something to do whilst they're... Um, whilst they're thinking through atomic energy levels. So, there we go. Have I done all five? That's what I want to know. I've done the grapes, that was one. I've done the can, that was two. I've done the fruit batteries, that was three. I've done the potato, that was four. And I've done the atomic energy levels, that was five. Great, well, there are five ideas for using fruit and sweets. Um, to teach real physics. I hope you found that very interesting. And I will be around now for uh, the next 45 minutes or so on Talk Physics, ready to interact and answer any questions. And I'm sure some other people from the IOP will be around too to give some ideas. But please do feel free to share your ideas. And like I say, I will upload some shorter video clips for you and some, some other um, stuff. Uh, some paper resources uh, around that and a list of lots of other experiments you can do with fruit and sweets and i'm going to stop broadcasting in a second and encourage you all to immediately start posting um and i'm going to eat a smarty to say goodbye so thank you for watching it's been fun if you've enjoyed it please say so in the comments as well because we might do something like this again sometime soon but thank you very much bye